Hi guys. Like every photographer I know, I have owned far too many bags. This goes beyond reasonable, it becomes obsessive. I've gathered bags like confetti. Shoulder bags, backpacks, holster bags, you name it, I've owned it. And I was never happy with the setup that I had. And when I moved to Spain and started venturing into the mountains and the deserts frequently, I realized that something had to change. So three years ago, I sold every bag I owned and I bought two mountain bags from a company called F-Stop. So the bags I bought were the F-Stop Tilopa 50 liter, the F-Stop Ajna 35 liter. Now the 50 liter bag is perfect for going on camping expeditions into the mountains. So any multi-day expedition I make, I can pack all my camera gear, all my camping gear, and off I go and I'm set. But weight is everything, and that's why I bought multiple bags. So I take a smaller bag when I'm just going on a day trip. I don't need to carry tents, cooking gear, etc., etc. All I need is my camera kit, my tripod, and uh, a little bit of food. So smaller bag. And when I go on short expeditions, so of an evening, taking off, walking around the hill, a bit of exercise, a bit of photography, I've got an F-Stop ultralight 25 liter Guru bag, and that just takes my cameras and a little bit of food, water bottle, and that's it. And that's the lightest bag I have. Now, the magic that glues this whole system together is an interchangeable module uh, called an ICU, and it's in that module that the cameras live. And I can lift that module out of one bag, put it into another, the whole process takes less than 10 seconds. So it's highly configurable, very easy to use. And uh, I've been using these bags now for two and a half years, and I'm really happy that I've got the right combination of bags at last. Okay, today we're going to talk about the largest of these bags, the one that I take on the camping expeditions, and uh, let's get into it. <laughs> This is the F-Stop Tilopa 50 litre double diamond backpack. This is the bag that I take on multi-day expeditions. It's huge. I can fit a lifetime of stuff into this bag, as you are about to see. Okay, let's unpack. Okay, these are walking poles. This is from a company called Lecky. And um, these are an absolute power for the hills. Walking distances of probably on average between 5 and 15 kilometers for these expeditions. Um, these really make it possible. I could not carry this bag without poles. Sleeping bag. This is a Thermarest sleeping bag. It's certified for I think minus 6 degrees. Yeah, minus 6 degrees. And I have needed all of that um, good stuff, all that warmth on occasion. Um, even two days ago, we're now uh, sort of middle of June, uh, boiling hot at ground level. Up in the mountains, it gets down close to zero at night, so we need a sleeping bag. These are my tent poles. Uh, hold the tent up. Faisal tripod, carbon fiber. This is fantastic. It's very light. It's got no center column. I have an absolute thing about center columns. I hate them. Um, a center column will introduce movement into your shots, whether you like it or not. And if you're doing landscapes, you're focusing on things sometimes that are very far away. Slightest movement in your tripod is going to introduce blur into your shot. Um, on top of this, I've got a leveling base, Acrotec leveling base. So I can move my head around with the camera on it until it's completely level. And the head moves in that direction. And 
in that direction. So I can achieve any frame that I want. It's as, as maneuverable as a ball head. Um, very good head. Okay, let's put that away. And let's have a look and see what we've got inside the bag. So, this is a Rab Gillette or over jacket. I'm walking all day in the sunshine, get very hot, I don't need this jacket. When I stop moving, the temperatures drop down below 10 degrees. Um, what happens is your sweat freezes on your body. You can get hypothermia in bad weather. You need to, when you get to your camping place, put more clothes on. Then you can cool down, it'll keep your core nice and warm and you won't get the shakes from freezing cold. Okay, into the top portion of the bag. Spoon, knife and fork. We eat stuff up there. We like to dine out in style in the mountains. Matches to light the stove with. Suntan lotion. It might be cold up there, but you're still going to get sunburned. Head torch for wandering out in the night. Little blow up pillow. I like my creature comforts. The secret weapon. My girlfriend gave me this. It's a little electrically powered pump and I use this to blow up my air mattress. And this is in great demand from my fellow hikers. It's an absolutely fantastic and very cheap little device into the main body of the bag. First thing out, it's a water filter. So one of the things about hiking is weight. We're doing big distances, um, 15, 18 kilometers sometimes. You do not want to be carrying liters and liters of water. What we do in the Sierra Nevada, we've got the freshest spring water, uh, melts down from snow, goes into reservoirs in the rock. We can catch this out in springs. But there are also cows, bulls, horses, uh, vultures, and things die up there. You need to have a filter. You cannot drink this water straight out of the stream. Um, so the, the water goes into a reservoir and you squeeze it through into a cup and that takes all the bacteria out of the water. This is an MSR camping stove. Very neat, very light, um, and very easy to pack away. Um, this is the gas that powers it. Thermos air mattress. So what this does, I pump this up with my magic pump. It takes about a minute and a half to pump up. It's longer than me, slightly wider, fits the profile of the tent almost perfectly, and um, very comfortable night's sleep. First aid stuff. The tent, this is an MSR Hubber NX tent and this is fantastic because I can put this tent up in probably a couple of minutes. It's really simple, you just put the ground sheet out, peg out the ground sheet, get the, um, the frame of the tent set up and then the rest of the tent clips to the frame and then you put the pegs in the ground to keep it all nice and stable and really literally five minutes work. I'll probably in time get this down to a couple of minutes. It's very, very fantastic, a big fan. Okay, this is DJI Pocket video camera. And I take this to do little bits of cutaways for the videos. There. Okay. This is a water bladder, and this fits into the, um, there's a compartment in the rucksack for this. The tube passes through um, a, 
a customized um, channel for it, so it all zips up, all waterproof. Um, and this is actually the perfect watering system when you're on the, on the hike, because you simply you put this in your mouth, bite down on it, on it and suck, and you get a mouthful of water. Uh, it's, it's beautiful. And the weird thing is, is you actually consume less water with this, but you're much more hydrated because the business of getting a bottle of water out of the pack, you know, taking the bag off, glugging back the water, you tend to take big, big sips. This is much more uh, efficient. Camelback. Okay, now we're into the, I oh know, we're not quite, a few little camera related items. Camera cards. Spare batteries. Cleaning pen for the lens. And I normally have a, a little blow device for blowing dust off the lens, which I don't have with me today. And this is the unit that I use to house the camera kit. So this zips up closed and I can move this between bags. This fits all of my bags. I can move it between the bags in a matter of seconds. It's called a ICU. It's an in internal camera unit. Okay, let's um, have a look and see what we've got inside it. Now on this expedition, I was hoping to do some solar, um, some astrophotography. And so I've got a rocking on fixed 14 mil lens, um, perfect for astrophotography. I've got a multi-tool in case anything breaks. I've got a remote shutter release. Little bag of desiccant gel to keep this nice and um, dry. Telephoto lens, this is the Canon 70 to 200 mil lens. Absolutely beautiful lens. The stabilization is fantastic. Okay, the last and most important thing, the camera. Canon 5DS, this is an absolute workhorse, this camera. They don't make them anymore, but you can pick them up second hand and I, I really advise that would be a good plan if you're a landscape photographer um, for around about 500 quid. So this was a 1200 pound camera when it was new. Um, beautiful, 50 megapixels, um, fantastic detail, really, really nice camera. On the front of it, I've got a 2470 lens. So um, 24 is wide enough for most landscape shots, a good percentage of landscape shots. If I want any closer, I can go in with my zoom lens here. Um, on the base of it, I've attached an L bracket. Now these are invaluable with landscape photography because sometimes you're not sure whether you want the shot in landscape or in portrait. And this simply clips onto the, um, onto the tripod head and in a second I can turn it round and it maintains the stability. It maintains the angle that the tripod head is set at. So it's a big, um, improvement on a conventional ball head. I've taken the Canon issue strap off because working with a tripod, um, often the strap can blow around in the wind and de not destabilize, but introduce vibration into your shot. Um, so this is a peak design strap. It fits around your wrist if you're doing street photography in the city and you're worried about your camera getting stolen. That's not going to happen with this strap. So I think that pretty much wraps up the capability of this bag. So it's an absolute giant. As you can see, you can fit almost all of your belongings and you've got air is able to get in through these runways so you don't overheat at the back. Your, your back is not pouring with sweat. Um, these go around your waist. So the idea is that the weight of the bag 
is on your hips, not on your shoulders. And that's really important because it means you can walk all day with this bag. It's not a big deal. You can adjust it up at the top as well to get it to tilt slightly away from your body or to tilt slightly towards your body if you want. Um, very configurable. Um, so that is the F-stop Tilopa. And um, my life would not be the same without it. I estimate the weight of this bag fully packed between 12 and 15 kilos, that's a guess. I'm going to go away and weigh it and put the number up on the screen. Um, it's very heavy. Um, the design of it though is such that you don't really don't feel the weight, you can keep going all day. So it's an absolute giant. As you can see, you can fit almost all of your belongings into this bag um, and take off into the hills, the F-stop to Lofa. Okay, thanks a lot for watching guys. Hope this has been useful and we'll see you next week.